everybody deserves the respect. And I also really believe that we can break down the system of power that we've been taught exists and we've, we've been taught is the only way to operate on set. It actually isn't. It actually isn't. Everybody needs to understand the greatest thing you can do is be someone who has integrity and respect and kindness and that is actually the most powerful thing rather than fear. Hi, I'm Kenzie Elizabeth. Um, I also go by KZ Elizabeth. And I'm a filmmaker, an actor, and a writer. Well, I got into film through acting. I did like community theater shows when I was younger. And then that turned into plays in middle school and then in high school. I was really interested in acting and also with my friends on the weekends, we would make our own um, little movies with a huge camcorder um, that my parents had. And by the time that I graduated high school, I was kind of fully, fully into acting, went to Boston to study acting at Emerson College. And while I was there, I took an improv class and a, I volunteered on a couple of student films. And that kind of, it's something about film for me. I had to drop out after my first semester of sophomore year. And I think I really, I think I had a little bit of a, a broken heart about it. Um, and I put acting away for a while and did not think about it, didn't really think anything of it. I always loved film. Um, I was loved, I felt like I was always studying the film when I would watch, go to the movies or like watch TV. But I was so brokenhearted, I think, when that had to happen that I kind of let it go for a bit. I lived abroad, I moved abroad, like saved up enough money to move abroad, and I studied cooking, and I was like, I'm gonna fall in love with something else. But I like really tried. But at the end of my stay, I went to the, I got invited to the Camp Film Festival. That's what got me back into film. I started in comedy, kind of studying improv um, to use in film, um, and I worked with a really independent film company that worked out of Second City, where we would produce uh, comedian pilots and web series for them. And I got kind of curious that if, uh, if we could make these for other people, then I could probably make it for myself. So um, that's kind of what drew me into um, filmmaking of my own stories, got me into directing. When I decided to go into filmmaking and directing, I told my family, um, specifically my mom, I told my mom first, and it was because I was going to shoot my own short film. And she was very excited for me up front, but she said to me, it's going to be really hard. I think also my family's very Irish, Italian, Catholic. I think the, the mentality that life can be hard is pretty prevalent. Both my parents were a little nervous when I told them. They said, it's going to be really hard. And it took me a long time to realize that that was them trying to protect me and my own you know, journey of you know, financially being able to afford it. <laughs> and also like taking the risk of not having a quote unquote like normal capitalistic job. Um, but also within a couple of years and even at the screening of my first short film, my mom said to me, I guess we can do hard things. I guess we can do hard things. Yeah, yeah. My dad has always been supportive. My dad's kind of the film buff. He loves films, loves to break them down. He loves to get into arguments with me about them, and it's really fun. I think it was like a rough, I wrote it really fast, like a fever dream um, one night, and I didn't think it was going to be anything. It was just um, I was kind of reminiscing on a dream that used to haunt me as a kid, like a nightmare I used to have. And it kind of started to develop into this story about a young girl who's dealing with kind of her otherness and how that otherness comes out to haunt her. And I wanted to 
make this story after helping so many other people make their stories, I was like, I'm gonna, I could film this. I could film this myself. I could, I could do this. And um, yeah, I got an amazing crew, reached out to a lot of different people, um, drained my savings account, and um, kind of dove, dove in. Yeah, it was very Chicago focused very Chicago focused. We had all Chicago crew, all Chicago cast, all the kids are from Chicago. Everyone um, who came out, to, we didn't like outsource anything. It was all just like, I personally went to the set, set, it was my aunt's house to film. And I spent the night before dressing the whole set and then woke up the next morning and made breakfast for the cast and crew and everything. Oh, I didn't think I could do it. I had to have my best friend sat me down like, I had the script for Ponytail. She had read it. She was so excited. She's actually one of the first people I ever, the first thing I ever produced was her web series. And she changed the game for me. Her name is Chelsea Devonta. I'm gonna shout her out. So that she's my best friend. She's, she's so fabulous. And I, I love her point of view, but mainly she sat me down after years and years of collaborating together. I still hadn't made my own short film and she sat me down and said, you are not, you can't have your next birthday without doing the thing that you've been dying to do. And I was like, I don't have the money. I don't know how to, she's like, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And I did. And it was terrifying. I worked at a diner and I also worked, I worked at a diner. I freelanced for a casting agency. I did commercials. I like, oh, I worked so much in order to save up money to make that. And it is, it's very scary. It's very, very scary. But um, wouldn't change it for the world. Wouldn't change it. But people can do hard things. That's the thing. That's what I believe. Is that like, yeah, you think it's hard? Well, people can do hard things. I worked as a PA on ABC's Bless This Mess, which was honestly a pretty singular experience. I had done PA work uh, when I was at Emerson College and did um, a couple like student films like that but when I got this job with Bless This Mess first of all it's a pretty women honed show mostly run by women so it was super singular in the way that the set was very different it was operated as if like your goals were just as important as us making this TV show and it was super collaborative um, so I was working in the office uh, in the production office and I remember I was running like scripts to set. I was like doing lunch for people, setting up all of the um, concept meetings. I was setting up scouts. I was setting up like final meetings and things like that, table reads. And I have this director, her name is Molly McGlynn, another mentor kind of um, someone I admire. She came up to me, she was the supervising director on the show. And she came up to and said, hey, uh, rumor has it, you're a director. And now she's the supervising director, so she directed quite a few episodes of that season, as well as she was there every single day supervising the other directors to make sure that the tone was all staying the same. Unbelievable artist out of, wait for it, Toronto. And <laughs> she, she asked me, she said, are you a director? And I said, yeah, and she goes, great. I'm gonna pull you from the office a couple days. Um, and I'd love your help on set. She was truly a woman advocating for other women. It was unbelievable. She pulled me from the office throughout the whole season and I helped her build her shot list once. I just got to shadow her on set and I would have never had that opportunity. Never had that opportunity. A close friend of mine was working on the show as a writer, her name is Ashley Nicole Black. She said to me on my first day of work, she said, tell every woman what you want to do, they'll always be them to open the door. And I never forgot it. I believe it fully. And I believe Molly is one of those women. Ashley's one of those women. And honestly, every woman I worked with on that show. Amazing. And then that transitioned into, I worked a little bit for the Jon Stewart show as a PA um, remotely. Now I work for the production company Loom and Caviar and I work up in the editing department kind of helping them out. And I genuinely believe that PA work is so important. PAs are vital. They are some of the most important people on set. And 
As far as making it, I think I'm at a point in my life, in my career, where I've deconstructed the idea of making it. And to me, making it is actually making something with people I care about, stories that I'm excited about. I am very proud of a film I shot in 2019 um, and was finished early 2020, right before the pandemic. Um, it's a film called Pathetic Woman. Um, I'm super proud about that because it kind of feels like a little bit of my Chicago roots showed up in LA and we told the story in a very Chicago comedy way, which is very grounded. It's kind of surreal at times, um, but we worked with a lot of really amazing improvisers. The writers and the leads of the movie are two improvisers, writers, comedians, actors. They're fantastic. and. I think the collaboration amongst the three of us was, is really special, really, really special. And then um, I just finished a music video for the artist Johanna Samuel, who just opened for Joni Mitchell at the Newport Festival. Um, she's an amazing musician, amazing folk artist. And something I'm, I'm really proud to have done this project with her, because she gave me blind faith. <laughs> she gave me blind faith. I pitched her an idea. Um, and we had very little research, very little time. She didn't ask to see a single cut until I was fully finished. She gave me so much grace, so much trust. She handed me two diaries from her childhood. Huge, thick diaries. And I went through and scanned them all in and then made this story through her song that kind of follows her, the trajectory of like a young like kid who's like, discovering this idea of love and like a celebrity crush and how you like kind of pour yourself into the fantasy of love and then what it looks like in the end turning into an adult and how that actually feels but it's all done through stop motion collage work which was awesome in the end but whoa what a process editing has taught me so much about directing and it's taught me so much about storytelling i think it's vital i actually think it's so important um to work as many different departments or roles, or if you're working on a production and a department needs help, lend your hand. Like the, the, the worst that can come is that like you're more tired at the end of the day. Like genuinely, all, the only thing that can come from it is that you will grow, you'll learn. I, do, I actually think it's so important, especially as a director and a filmmaker, to know as much about every aspect of it. One, it allows you to understand how you're gonna make something, how you're gonna make the story, have then just naturally gain respect for every aspect. It takes so many people and so much like hard work to make a film. Understand all of it. Be kind to everybody, PAs, gas, I mean anybody on crew, lighting, I mean like uh, anyone in craft services, just be kind to literally everybody. It doesn't, it's the easiest thing in the world and that I think will change the the way the film industry is. It's just like, not, it's not hard and I tend to focus mainly on connecting with and collaborating with a lot of women, queer people, POC. I want their perspective. I see the world as more interesting with a perspective coming from a woman a queer person, a person of color. I find it exciting to give them the mic, yeah. And to collaborate with someone whose perspective is so different than mine. That's what I love about it. My goal is to eventually have a production company that would focus on um, women's stories, queer people's stories, people of color. But I genuinely really want to work on making um, the industry a place where women, queer people, and people of color feel lifted by, rather than fighting to be included. I want to hear what you have to say, so can you please make the thing? Make the thing. All of our creative ideas have a shelf life. Uh, and soon you won't identify with that thing anymore. And I want to see who you are at this moment in time. Make the thing. You have an idea, make it for you. Tell your, tell the thing, tell your story. I wanna hear your perspective. I used to really believe that you had to 
go to film school. You had to like come from a certain type of family. You had to have a certain type of support in order to be able to make your dream, the vision for your life happen. And life has just showed me that conviction is actually the only thing that carries me through. That if I could pick a log line, it would probably be, I really believed that I had to travel one type of road and I was taught by life itself, just circumstance in general, that it's never gonna go the way you plan. So as long as you have conviction, as long as I had conviction, it was always, it just always was gonna work out. Never easy. <laughs> never easy, but if you have conviction and persistence, I'll speak for myself. I had conviction and I had persistence. And I don't think uh, I would be where I am without it. <laughs>